Today on Jack's Tracks, I do a new series called Remember That Record, as well as unboxing a package from Frank over at Channel 33 RPM. Stay tuned. Album reviews, record hauls, and vinyl crates again at Jack's Tracks Records. Hello and welcome back to Jack's Tracks Records. It has been a while. The last video that I made was reacting to modern songs on Spotify. That video did fairly well, so thanks to everyone that watched it and left comments on it. I have been brainstorming new ideas for the channel, so I kind of took like a three week break. I hope you guys didn't mind the wait, but this video is going to be very exciting. As you saw from that intro, I'll be doing a new series called Remember That Record. This is kind of a play on Norman Maslow's, AKA Mazzy's Whack-A-Mole, which he is very famous for over at the Norman Maslow channel. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description below. Also, I'll be unboxing a package from my buddy Frank over at Channel 33 RPM. I recently sent Frank a cheap trick record and he has really been digging it. And he unboxed that on his channel and I'll also leave the link in the description to that video and Frank's channel. And a lot of my viewers are actually from Frank and I'm always appreciative of his help toward this channel. So yeah, let's get right into this episode. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is the thing that I'm calling Remember That Record. This is a play on Norman Maslow's Whack-A-Mole. If you're not familiar, it's basically where I close my eyes and pick five random records for my collection and kind of tell the story about when I bought it. Dylan from The Record Spinner also did a series similar to this, which is really awesome. It's with his girlfriend, Sam, and they do a great job together. I'm sure there's several other people who have done it. I believe Davis Winchester has done a video about this. So yeah, I thought I would kind of jump on this train if you will and do this topic don't know how i'm gonna do this but i think i'm gonna set up the camera over there close my eyes and pick five random records let's hope this goes well okay this is kind of a different angle this live on air sign is crooked there we go so i'm going to be picking five random records from these shelves there's also a shelf under there and then that stuff is kind of 45s and bucks. I've done a room tour on this, which I will leave in the link. I will leave the link to that video in the description, but here we go. So I'm closing my eyes here. This is gonna be weird. I've never really done this kind of thing before. So one, two, three, go here, four, five. Okay, I picked five random records. I still don't know what they are. Let's get back to the desk. All right, and we are back. I'm not sure the exact order I picked these in, but this is definitely a diverse selection. The first one that we have here is Kansas, and I believe this is pronounced Left Overture. I definitely butchered that as I always do with this record. This was one of the first ones I ever bought, and I'll hold it up here. This was from a bookstore, actually, and it was the first record store I've ever been to, and it wasn't really a record store. It's a used uh, secondhand bookstore in Ellicott City, Maryland, and it was, it was quite a hike from my house, but I was around there, and I saw a little record store, and I knew they had CDs, so I went in there, and I used to collect CDs a lot, and I found a couple of records, and one of the first ones was Rush Moving Pictures, which has always been one of my favorite records, but I also saw this one, which has Carry On Wayward Son, which is an amazing song, but The Wall is great. This is a very, very underrated band, and this is their most popular record, but no one talks about Kansas. They're an amazing, amazing, um, almost prog rock group, and they're just completely incredible. Carry On Wayward Son is a great song, and a lot of people know them from that, but there we go. The first record that I picked randomly was Kansas Left Overture. Up next, we have the Rolling Stones Hot Rocks. This is a great compilation if you're looking to get into the Rolling Stones. I've never been a huge fan personally. I've always liked their greatest hits like Satisfaction, Sympathy for the Devil, all of that really, really great stuff. That is on this compilation, but there is a sequel to this, and I think it's called like Honk or something, and that's like the Hot Rocks Part 2 that was released after 71, and this is just... 64 to 71, a really, really great compilation. It's a double LP. Again, a, I'm, I'm surprised I'm picking like my first records here. This was um, another buy from Ellicott City, Maryland, a different a different store, but this is a re really, really cool one. My friend Jack Robert, who I leave in the channel 
Uh, there's like a featured channel thing on my channel and he's always in there, but I will leave the link to his channel in the description. He has a clear vinyl copy of this, so I might have to upgrade to that, but I'm pretty happy with this one. It sounds really good and it has a great track list. So there we go. The second one I picked was the Rolling Stones Hot Rocks. Number three is Dire Straits, the debut album. I've been giving this a lot of spins lately. This is one of my new all-time favorite records. It's it's so, so good. And a lot of people don't really listen to it. A lot of people like um, Brothers in Arms, which is also great. That has money for nothing and a lot of their big hits. But uh, this one has Sultans of Swing, which is one of my favorite songs by Dire Straits. And a really, really, it's really good background music, I think, Dire Straits. Really, really good background music. Mock Knopfler, obviously one of the greatest guitar players of all time. I love that tone that he gets uh, with his Fender Stratocaster. It just sounds so, so cool. But there we go. This is a great record if you're looking to get into Dire Straits. I would probably get this, the Four Brothers in Arms, which is probably an unpopular opinion here in the vinyl community, but that's just my thoughts on it. I would recommend this one more than Brothers in Arms. So there we go. Number three is Dire Straits, the debut album. All right, number four, it's Primus, Suck On This. This is a Record Store Day exclusive on that really cool kind of light blue splatter vinyl. This is a killer record. Record. It's a live record from Primus, and one of the coolest things about this particular pressing of it, this is the original inner sleeve it came in, and here is the cover, still in the shrink wrap, but it came with these 3D glasses, and when you put them on, look pretty cool, um, the cover is actually 3D which is really, really, really cool. The first song, John the Fisherman, the beginning is a play on YYZ by Rush, and that was so cool listening to. Les Claypool, the lead singer and bassist for Primus, has said multiple times he has been influenced by Getty Lee in many, many ways, so it was very cool to hear them bust out the beginning of YYZ on John the Fisherman. This is a great record, and if you can still find it, which I think it is going for pretty hefty prices now, I'm not too sure. I don't really keep track on these record stores exclusive prices but if you can find it at your local record store i would highly recommend it and the fifth and final record was the beatles rock and roll music this is a double lp one of the first beatles records i ever bought and this was shown on my very first real video almost not including my introduction my top 15 favorite records of all time rock and roll music this made an appearance now that's probably not the case today and i will be making an updated version of that list coming out very very shortly make sure to stay tuned for that but this record is really really good it's a great compilation with the beatles more rockin tunes i mean taxman is on here obviously the cover of rock and roll music by chuck berry which is the title of this record i would really recommend this one if you're into the beatles more rock side helter skelter which is many people will say is kind of the start of heavy metal which i don't necessarily agree with but a lot of people have their own theories about how metal was started, and that's one of them that many people think. The cover is really cool. Um, it has these like hands on it. I'm not really sure why they decided to do that, but it's a cool aspect of it. Uh, the label is a Coke label, so it has that like Coke bottle or Coke glass label, which is really cool. But yeah, I would really recommend this one if you're into the more Beatles um, rock inside. This is a great record. So there we go. The fifth and final record would have to be, or not would have to be, I don't really have a choice, but the Beatles rock and roll music. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. That is Remember That Record. And if you want me to do more of these series, that's pretty short, so I may combine it with something else like this video is going to. But if you want me to do more of this, make sure to comment down below. I really enjoyed doing this. It was kind of weird closing my eyes and just kind of going all over the record shelves. At one point, I probably will have to cut out. I like went over the record shelf and it was like there weren't any records there. So it's weird when you close your eyes and you pick random stuff, but it was very fun filming tell me if you enjoyed it down in the comments but now we're gonna get to the package that frank sent me all right so a couple weeks ago i sent frank from channel 33 rpm a cheap trick record it was dream police and i do i have dream police i don't think i even have dream police i certainly don't have this version of it it was a reissue it's their cheap trick has the great reissues out right now i believe a lot of them are still in print 
but um, I meant to send it to him on his birthday, which was in October. Turns out Amazon US can't send to Amazon Canada, which was a huge misstep because I just kept trying to do it and it wasn't sending. I finally figured out why and it ended up shipping in like January. So he was kind enough to send something back. Luckily, not four months late. Again, I'm so sorry about that, Frank. But uh, yeah, so here is the package. I've crossed out both our addresses. So let's open this. I'm not seeing any of this yet, so this is very exciting. Awesome. Okay, so we have a note here. Hi, Jack. I know you are a Rush fan, so I thought I would send you these Canadian pressings. If you already have these pressings, feel free to pass them on. I think it's always cool to get pressings from a band's country or origin. Keep on spinning, Frank. I will definitely not sell these. They are. It is my favorite band. So let's see what is in here. All right. So the first one that we got here, I'm sure you can see this, is the live album, Exit Stage Left. I've said numerous times that this is my favorite um, Rush live album. I've never owned a Mobile Fidelity sleeve. I've owned spinoffs of them. All of mine are in a square deal recording sleeve, which I made a whole video about. I'll link that up there. But I've never had an official MoFi sleeve, so that's very exciting. Really great outer sleeves. I believe Frank talks about vinyl storage solutions. I'm pretty sure all of them are coming from, um, I believe his name is Mike from Vinyl Storage Solutions. This is so awesome. That looks great. And I'll definitely play that and say what I think. And then our last one here, always a huge favorite of mine. I love this record. This has always been one of my favorites, probably my second favorite Rush record. This is really a great record, Permanent Waves. Um, it's got my favorite all-time Rush song on it, Spirit of Radio, as well as Free Will, Jacob's Ladder, a ton of really, really great ones on here. Again, with the really, really nice um, outer sleeves there, and I'm sure it's in a lovely inner sleeve. So, thank you so much, Frank. I'll definitely report and see what I think of these Canadian pressings. I've never owned a Canadian pressing, so that's definitely a mark on the bucket list. All right, thank you so much, Frank, for that amazing package. I've been giving Permanent Waves and Exit Stage Left listens, and they're awesome. I mean, these Canadian pressings, to my ears, sound great. I mean, the Permanent Waves copy sounds better than my U.S. pressing of it. So if that's surprising to any of you, it's surprising to me. But it is also very cool to own what... Rush would have probably owned if they owned their their records. I mean, they were based in Canada, and these are Canadian pressings. So that on top of that is really cool. And he sent them in really, really nice outer sleeves and MoFi inner sleeves. So I'm very, very appreciative of that, Frank. And thank you so much for sending over these records. I have something I think you'll really, really enjoy. It's kind of obscure, and I think you would really, really like it. I'm going to have to send that to your way soon. But again, thank you so much for that incredible package. I really appreciate it. It, man. And that concludes this episode of Jack's Tracks Records. Thanks so much to Frank for sending that amazing package. As well as, I want you to leave a comment if you enjoyed that Remember That Record series. I really enjoyed filming it, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. But as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Jack's Tracks Records.